Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This time, we got a rotary for our fiber. All right, so we wanted to be able to do rings and, you know, when we did the mug, we just kinda had it trying to hold it, but rotary's how you fix that problem and doing anything cylindrical. So we reached out to Monport and now we've got a rotary. We're gonna unbox it and get it running. All right, I did open the box just to make sure that the rotary is actually in here. Haven't taken it out, haven't set it up, so you're gonna be with us as we do it. It does have really nice looking foam, and then looks like foam wrapped around it, so it's heavy too. I'm just gonna flip it over and put the whole thing out onto this piece of foam. All right, you can see how well it's packed. Quite nice, thick foam. So we can put that aside and see what all it came with. Okay, here is a bag of different pieces. Looks like some chuck jaws, as well as Allen wrenches, some screws or bolts, and I assume this piece is what you tighten and loosen the chuck with. And then let's unwrap this. Not really sure how that's, oh, there it is. Perforated. All right. And then there we go. So we've got the wire level. That's really cool. And then the chuck, and it does have jaws on it. Looks like it is very nice and greased, so it shouldn't come rusted. There we go. I will definitely clean that off. No instructions, no paperwork. That's fine. Um, we'll figure the rest of this out. Let me go ahead and open this bag, and let's see what's in there. Move that aside and we'll dump it all out here on the phone. Okay. Yep. Three bags are the other jaws. They look just smaller, it looks like. Not really sure. There is the key. Yep. Works great. Not sure what the spring is for. And then Allen wrenches, it looks like probably, yeah, one size for here. Yep. And then one size most likely for the bolts it came with. And this can screw down on the base of the laser. Now, I'm worried that it's gonna be too tall. So we'll figure that out. And then we should also be able to, and I'm guessing it is the little Allen again. Yep, interesting. Because this whole piece should angle around. Oh, that's not gonna be the this part. It looks like it's this part. You can see where it loosens and tightens there. So let's... Loosen here. There we go. Perfect adjustment. I messed that up, so I'd have to line that one back up. The other side is correct, though, and has it at 90. There we go. I can adjust that a little bit more if it's off. The other side you can see is moving correctly. Looks like it doesn't go back to 45. I'm not sure why it's on there. But it does go down to 90 and can go a little bit more. And then you just 
tighten that back up again there. Perfect. Now let's take a look at these. I'm guessing this is a replacement spring and somewhere there's a spring. I don't think that it really needs to be on there. Not entirely sure. Oh, so they're the opposite is what they are. So this would be if you need a bigger piece clamped down this way or staggered and then these are in the inside or around the outside. Now, this does show me a problem that we're going to run into with rings, which is what we would like to do. For the inside, it'd be fine because this can just go down and hold it or swapping it out to one of these to hold it. However, that is not small enough to put a ring on it. So, we now need to figure out a piece to put the ring on to hold it. Now what I'm thinking is a ring mandrel. It's the same thing you'd use on a lathe if you're sanding it or making a ring or sizing it. Um, we've got mandrels for our CNC to hold smaller uh, shanks on the bits. It's just the opposite. It's on the inside instead of the outside. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to try to find something, uh, filer, anything to 3D print so that we can get it faster. And if that works, uh, we'll have a great way to do different rings in different sizes. So I'm going to take a look at that and uh, we will be right back. All right, so I found a mandrel for rings um, on the internet for free. So I downloaded it, printed it. Uh, first print didn't go well, but did a second one and it turned out much better. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be solid at the bottom. Doesn't feel super secure up the sides. I printed it in layers this way, so I think that's actually less strong than it would be if you did it on its side. Not really sure, let me know if you know. but. It'll at least get us through making one and figuring this out. And if I like this kind of design, we can find a metal one. Um, I went ahead also got the rotary set up on the laser and I've got it plugged in the back. That's all I've done. I did find in Lightburn, there's an enable rotary setting right here. I don't know how that's gonna work exactly, but uh, we're gonna do some test passes and see. This is our design that we're going to use. Kind of uh, rune inspired. This will be in the middle of the ring and then wrap around. So you kind of get the gist. Big part in the middle and then down the edges. Uh, I'm thinking uh, because this doesn't exactly sit straight there that maybe I will put stuff under the base of the finger here to kind of get it to where it sits level in here. And then I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in tape and do a first pass or a few to get the sizing right, uh, to make sure that the rotary's working right and not marking the ring before we're ready. All right, Aaron taped it up for me. It's sitting really nicely here. So now what I'm doing is that I'm just trying to move the designer. It's really way far over here, so this is not ideal. I'm not sure if ideal would be putting it back and coming this way. I don't know. Play with it, figure out what works good for you. This whole piece can pivot out too. So if this doesn't work at all, you could have a setting over here uh, where it does it. And anything much bigger than this, it won't even go much taller. So there's all kinds of things about that that need figured out. But it's a little too tall with how this is. I don't know. So it's one of those. Might have to end up doing that. And it looks like. Yeah, the, there's four bolts in this when you put it together. You can take those out and then the whole piece turns. So that might be something we have to do if we're rotoring to get it in the right place. But I was able to, I pulled this all the way to this side. And then if I hit frame, we can actually see that it's on the tape. So what I need to do is get it smaller and get it uh, up into exactly where we want it. That's super close to the center, but it's too big. So I'm going to keep adjusting this and then we'll do a test run. Alright, we've been trying for a little bit now and we discovered that it will 
not burn through the tape. So what I did is that we took um, an, one of the test pieces that we have that's just the black card and we wrapped it around the ring and then ran it. And so it's running, it's twisting, but few problems. First and foremost, it looks terrible. Um, but it being this far over here and not under it, it actually did curved lines. So I'm definitely gonna have to figure out a way to get this underneath it, right? And like even right where it's at, it would have to be literally in the jaws to be in a good spot. So it cannot be here. I'm gonna try to move it around and see if we can get it into a spot that's okay. And then we'll test it again and see if it does better. It also squished everything. I'm not sure if that's part of because of where it's at or not, but I will see what we can figure out. Been doing a lot of different testing. I just folded these cards that came with it over and we're running things and it kept overlapping and overlapping and overlapping. What I ended up finally figuring out is that we go into the setup section of the rotary and this is where we can see, uh, you know, different settings. Uh, Chuck, we've got a Chuck, so we're going with that, which you can see we moved way back to where we could get the middle point. Um, it's on reverse direction. I've just realized that I need to do that because of the testing, but you don't necessarily need to. You would need to test what yours is. Uh, it auto set on X axis. That would be this direction. This is Y axis. So that's part of why it was smashing things to start. So I changed it to Y axis. And then the big one is steps per rotation. This is how many steps for a full rotation. It was set on 5,000, which meaning it's thinking it's doing a full turn on 5,000, which is why everything was overlapping because it thought it was moving more than it should have been. Now, in research, I found that 12,800 is a full rotation, and you can hit test after you do that, and you can actually watch it to make sure that it's doing a full turn. And it is now, and you can see, I can hit test. You can see, so this one is right here. This one. Right back there. And then it'll go back to the start. And right back where it was. So, figure out exactly what the steps are. This might still be slightly off, but it is what I found, and we will now test with the actual ring. So, I finally got it now that we did that, and you can see that it actually burned correctly. This isn't perfectly round, so it messed up in a few spots, but very, very close. Ring is back on. Now, we're definitely not in the right spot. But when we frame it, we can see we can see we are a little bit off of where we need to be. So, what the different settings do, this one output center, this is going to put a center line down it. And so we hit that and we can see that I've got it really close. Not sure if it can be better than that. And then we can hit frame. So that's definitely not where we want it. So we can stop that. Let's go ahead and zero it. Or actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit frame and I'm just gonna move the ring where we want it. Okay, use what you got. We've got a toothpick in holding this part up which actually allows it the back to sit level. Uh, it's because of this piece being so wide that it gets to a wider part of the mandrel before the back can on it. So it's always cantered a little bit. So we've got that in there holding it up. And when we frame it, this is for testing purposes. We are okay with this ring not being perfect and it's not going to be. Um, settings right now are 400 speed at 50% power. And, uh, we're gonna see what it looks like. So let's frame that one more time. It looks great. And let's see what it does. All right, not strong enough to mark it. I'm going to 80% and I'm just gonna send it the way it is right now. You can barely 
really start to see some marking there. Um, I'm just going to keep playing with settings and we'll get back to you when uh, we got some that work. Okay, I got some settings that we were able to make marks on it with. It doesn't look all that great, but you can see that it's actually doing it. Um, I think part of the problem is that this is different shape enough that it's throwing off uh, the exact focal length and the focus on it. So I don't think the same focus is everywhere and it's far enough out that it's not doing the full thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what we can do to a bar, just a pipe. All right, that worked much better. So 100% <clears throat> a focal issue. I didn't have it very focused. I got a better focus. It's definitely cutting down into it. Um, <clears throat> looks like I messed up a little part of it. When it was cutting this, it was like the pipe was way down this way. So it was trying to get too far down here. And it, that's a setting. It looks like you can do your split setting. So you can just make it smaller. So it'll do smaller section, move a bit, smaller section, move a bit. And that'll be a better way to do it. You just have to figure that out as you go and test it. But really happy with it. It actually burned it. I uh, would still like to see a little bit better of a black. There's some like brown and golds in there. That may be the actual pipe though. Definitely works well. Had to move it as far over here as we could. This is the Monport Rotary. Um, I'll put a link in the description along with the... Uh, laser and our discount code. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks for coming and watching, and we'll see you next time.